Well, hello, and welcome to the GFC podcast. My name is Patrick Mitchell. I'm one of the pastors on staff here. It's a joy to have you. Sometimes on this podcast, we cover things that we didn't talk about in the Sunday message, and there's a little more left to talk about. Sometimes we interview people that we're just excited uh, to know and want you to know, and that is what we are going to do today. Uh, I got my good friend Aaron Murphy here, dear brother in Christ, who, uh, man, you wear a lot of hats. And so we're going to hear some about that, <laughs> right? So, man, glad you're here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're partners with, with Good Samaritan Ministries, one of our local partners, which you run, and uh, the executive director there, but really just want people to get a chance to know you some too. Um, so tell us some about yourself, family, the, again, all these different hats you wear. Yeah. So give us, who, who's Aaron here? Who is Aaron? <laughs> well, first, I am, uh, you know, servant leader. On behalf of the kingdom of God, yeah, that's first and foremost. I'm a husband mm-hmm. of one wife mm-hmm. and a father of one son. There you go. You know, my family is very important to me. I'm a family man, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm called to a mission, and that mission is to be a good Samaritan in every realm, in every uh, facet, mm-hmm. outlet that um, I'm involved in. And so, being yeah. that ambassador on behalf of God's kingdom is what I'm about. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome, man. Um, now, so people wouldn't know necessarily because you don't like flaunt it, but you're a pastor, you're a civic leader, you're a CEO, executive director. So talk about those different those different roles and, and where you do those. Well, I come from the um, the the frame framework of you know the position, the title doesn't make me. I make it. Mm. Um, Serving is something I've learned growing up. I've watched my mother and father serve, uh, do community service. Yeah, my mom, she still serves. Okay, she will give you her last. Mm. Um, I've watched you know family members, cousins, uncles, aunts serve, and so I grew up in a family that's about serving, and um, you know I enjoy doing that. Uh, but you know, God's called me to this area to serve, mm-hmm. and uh, as the Bible says, when you are uh, faithful over a few things, He will make you ruler of many. Mm. And uh, you know, say for instance, Good Samaritan. Yeah. I started off as a volunteer. Right. I was just serving. Okay. Um, got out of seminary. I was invited to come volunteer, and uh, my predecessor and I uh, we made a connection, and uh, she offered me a part time role. Mm-hmm. And the rest is history. Okay. But, um, you know, uh, just found myself in places where yeah. I started off small, but God trusted me with mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, so, you, I mean, you've worked with the city, um, you know, different roles there, and at Thankful Baptist, which, you know, love. It's just, we, we could talk pastor to pastor, we could talk <laughs> dad to dad, whatever. Yeah. Uh, we can talk about Tennessee football. Yeah. You know? so, go Vols. Go Vols, baby. Um, so Good Sam is one of our local partners. Um, and we've had, in fact, Amanda was telling me that she went in to meet with you yesterday and we had a a member of GFC was there, man in the front desk, running the front desk. So it's just cool. Like to hear the, those kinds of stories. Um, but we've had a lot of people who are new to our church family, you know, in the last year, a lot of people that have moved to the area that may just catch this podcast. So this is your chance just to give a little bit, maybe some history of Good Sam, but then also just what's the mission? What drives you guys? And how do you see that playing out on a regular basis? Yeah, the mission of Good Samaritan Ministries is all about um, serving the needs of the poor mm-hmm. um, to help neighbors in need through education, mentoring, and social services. We were birthed out of the parable of the Good Samaritan mm-hmm. in, in the book of Luke. Mm-hmm where uh, there was someone who got beat up due to life's challenges, Mm. um, you know, wasn't handed a good deck of cards and was left Mm -hmm. with nothing. And the priest walked by, saw this person, and, you know, chose to get on the opposite side of the road and kept Mm. walking, you know, the... The, the Levite, mm-hmm. or to, in modern terms, you know, hey, mm-hmm. the uh, the staff member on That's right. uh, with the church mm-hmm. saw the person on the side of the road and chose to keep walking on and move to the other side of the road. Mm-hmm. But there was this Samaritan 
who uh, saw the same person and said, hey, let me, let me do something about this mm-hmm. and uh, took the responsibility to take this person from a place of brokenness, a place of nothing, yeah. um, to a place of stability. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that's our creed, to, mm-hmm. uh, to help the helpless, to be a voice for the voiceless. And so we do that by way of uh, providing life skill classes, uh, mentoring, um, rent utility assistance, food assistance, mm. special programs. Um, we feed the homeless every day mm-hmm. out the front uh, front front door of our downtown office. Okay. Um, but you know we're we're grateful for the opportunity. Our staff consists of those who've left high paying jobs, corporate America, mm-hmm. to uh, to answer the call to be a missionary. Yeah. Here in Northeast Tennessee, we see ourselves as missionaries. Um, That's you know, good. Um, we've had opportunities to do other things, but you know, we don't see it as a as a job. We see it as a calling, mm-hmm. and we're fulfilling that and being extension to every church here in mm-hmm. the region to do yeah. the work of the Lord is important to us. But it's not the food box or helping someone with utilities or rent or clothes. Or, or any other tangible items, it, you know, those things aren't, are num- aren't the priorities of what we do. It's sharing the love of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. That's, our, that's our number one product. So um, mm. we don't compromise that. Um, you know, uh, we may help someone with a daily tangible need, yeah. but what's most important to us is that they know about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, and connect them to churches, to yeah. communities that can can love on them and disciple them. Um, mm-hmm. We feel that, you know, hey, let let the churches do what they do. You know, they're called to make disciples. Mm-hmm. We're we're called to to be on the mission field and do the yeah. work. So uh, we've got multiple volunteers from this awesome congregation. Okay. Um, you know, if I start naming the names, I'm sure I'll miss <laughs> yeah, miss some, and right. I don't want to get in trouble. But uh, you know, you guys are one of our top supporters, and we wouldn't be where we are without you guys. Oh man, well, I'm you know I'm still pretty fresh on the GFC <laughs> scene, but Good Sam's been around you know since I've been in Johnson City, and it's just a beautiful thing. And love the the way you talk about it and being missionaries. You know, yeah. it is you are in the world, you know, not of it, and you guys are making that tangible difference. Um, and I know one thing that you are passionate about is, um, you know, helping in a way that doesn't hurt, that right. it's actually bridging that gap and helping bring people out of poverty if possible, um, which it feels like we've seen more of, you know, just in our area, uh, and goodness, a host of reasons, you know, you can't even Absolutely. get into it all. Um, but what are some of the challenges that you've experienced as an organization that you're trying to help lead through or, you know, lead your team through? What are, what are some things that you've seen maybe in the last couple of years, especially? Yeah. Well, uh, the pandemic presented a major challenge to yeah. us back in 2020. Yeah. And, um, we've seen a large amount of transient, um, persons and families come to our area um, you know, our region grew uh, in a great way. You know, our yeah. population of John City went from like 60 to 70 plus. Yeah. You know, in a matter of of moments, it seemed yeah, as it's if. crazy. Um, you know, we, we had a, a housing shortage. I don't think I've ever seen that during my time of living here oh, since, you know, 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, but we had housing shortage after the pandemic. Um, people found... I would say the secret got out. Yeah, I know, right? People discovered. I don't North know who Tennessee. told. I don't know who told, <laughs> but they messed it up. <laughs> People found the jewel yeah. in, in the Appalachians. Mm-hmm. You know, they found this area and they're like, oh, come and come and be a part of this great community. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe some of the most loving, caring, awesome people I've ever met in my life, and I've lived in 20 states, mm. but some of the most caring, awesome people I've ever met in my life live in this region. Yeah. Um, and, and those that, that recently moved here, they, they share that yeah. same uh, belief. Uh, mm-hmm. But growth didn't only bring people who had good jobs, careers, 
and could add value, growth brought those who were broken, yeah. uh, those who didn't have anything, um, that were passing through and said, hey, wait a minute, there's something special here. So the challenge that Good Samaritan seen was the homeless population growing, mm -hmm. um, seeing faces we'd never seen before. Yeah. And I've been doing this line of work for going on 11 years. Um, I, I, I remember a time where I knew homeless, uh, homeless neighbors by name, yeah. um, friends, you know, yeah. it's not, I mean, it's normal for someone to be homeless and have a cell phone, mm -hmm. you know, we would text, pray, you know, pray with each other. But now I'm seeing a lot of faces I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. I can go two days without recognize, recognizing anybody. Wow. Um, downtown John City. Yeah, you're right there. Yeah. And so uh, we've seen the population grow, this transient population, and it presents uh, a set of challenges we've never endured before. Um, you know, uh, mental health mm. is is a reality. Um, we're still trying to navigate through that. Um, you know, um, addiction. Yeah. On a grander scale, right? You know, opioids mm. on a grander scale, fentanyl. Um, yeah. People who OD, and you you may find them the next day. Mm -hmm. um, we've just seen challenges we've never had to um, endure before, and so we're we've been at a crossroad as to, all right, God, what do we do? And God says, just keep sharing my love. Mm -hmm. You know, just keep being present. Um, keep giving them an opportunity. That if they want, if they want help, give them the help that they're asking for. Like yeah. one of my favorite uh, stories in the gospel was the man who was laying by the pool, and he was, you know, he was a paralegic. He he had been there for mm -hmm. years, um, and Jesus passed by the pool of Bethesda, and he asked him this very profound question. Mm -hmm. He said, do you want to be made well, mm -hmm. or do you want to be whole? Mm -hmm. And the man responded with an excuse. Yeah. Well, Jesus didn't ask you what happened. He just said, do you want to be whole? Yeah. Do you want to be made well? Mm -hmm. And so we pose the same question to our neighbors in need, like, do you want to be in this situation? No. Okay. Do you want to be housed? Yes. That is the start. If you want this, then that's 80% of what's going to help you get out of your situation. But if you don't mm -hmm. want it, then we can't want it for you. That's right. So uh, we're seeing neighbors who want it less mm -hmm. rather than want it more. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're still hopeful because you know we're fulfilling this calling to be a bridge out of poverty right. uh, to stability. And we've got multiple success stories. We're trying to get better at recording Telling those and, stories, yeah. and uh, talking about yeah. them. But um, we hosted a Taste and See today where we just mm. invite people to come and spend a day with us. Okay. Well, we'll pray. We start off every morning with scripture and prayer, and then we hit the ground running, boots on the ground. We mm -hmm. see ourselves as m Marines on the front line, mm -hmm. like Navy SEALs yeah. almost. Yeah. Hand to hand combat uh, and combating poverty, mm. one person at a time. Yeah, yeah, that's huge, man. Gosh, that's yeah. I mean, just hearing you talking, obviously, there's passion in there, and then you've got you know people that come to serve and to work because they share that. You know, yeah. they see that it's a need. It's not just a system out there. It's people. Um, you know, and you said like some. It, it, and this is where you know people argue and. You, know, you can just pull yourself up by the bootstraps and, you know, right. you can, you can get yourself better. And right. it's like, man, there's, we need, everybody needs those networks of love. Uh, and that's what you guys are providing yes. is those networks of love to somebody to come around people. Um, you know, you've used the word broken a couple of times and that's our, that's in our mission statement is just broken and vulnerable people f experiencing life in Christ. Mm. Um, and we're all broken. You know, yes. there's brokenness in all of us. We all need Jesus. Um, you know, and then we, beyond that, there's just different, different things that we're going to come across in our lives, right. um, where we need somebody else to step in and help. And so it's almost that like physical, tangible discipleship of, you know, yes, there is like growing in your spiritual formation, but just getting people to a place where that's even a possibility yes. is, you know, is key. And that's what it sounds like you guys are, 
are trying to do. Right. Um, and now I'm with you. I mean, you drive downtown and it is just, it's so many um, mm-hmm. homeless people right now. Um, you know, and I know there's talk, you know, with John Sevier Center and that, that whole shift happening and, and different things. So, I, you know, I'm sure you guys are even thinking about what that means, right. um, you know, in terms of your care and how you provide. Um, Cause I think most of the time, like when people think good Samaritan, they think about the thrift shop, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're like, yeah, I just, I donate stuff or I just right. I can go shop a little bit or whatever. And that helps. But when you hear all the stuff you guys are doing, it really is a holistic view of, Absolutely. you know, we, we, it's not just a handout. Like there are people on people trying to make a difference here, you know, to, to get them into stability. Um, and like you said, you know, you want to tell those stories. Uh, maybe that's something we can help with. Maybe we could tell stories. Um, <laughs> we could we could facilitate some of that. That'd be awesome. um, so I know we've got we're in October, which is crazy. Um, Halloween's not an official holiday for everybody. My family <laughs> happens to enjoy candy. So, um, but after that, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas. I would imagine for you guys, holidays is right. an emphasis. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just different hurts and pains come up. Yeah. The holidays is getting colder. Um, so what are some things you guys do in, in those months that are a little bit different even from the rest of the year? Yeah. So uh, we value uh, the family nucleus. Our mm-hmm. logo is a picture of, of a family. Mm-hmm. You know, you have, you have the mother and father and children. That's our logo. Mm-hmm. And um, we work hard keeping the family together, even though we've endured a season where grandparent-led households Oh man. You know, that's on the horizon Big. horizon that's growing by leaps and bounds. Yep. But whatever we can do to keep the original family nucleus together, we work hard to do that. Yeah. So during the months of um October, November, December, we launch uh a camp we launch an annual campaign titled Hope for the Holidays. Okay. We're we're uh working hard to provide the necessities for families to stay together, and that includes a Thanksgiving food box where um, a family, Mm -hmm. three to five, will get a nice turkey, and in the South, we say all the fixings. (laughs) During Christmas, they get a nice ham, and in the South, we say all the fixings. But not only during um, Christmas, they get a food box with a ham and all the you know, the fixings, mm-hmm. uh, we have a Be A Light Marketplace store mm. where these families can um, shop for gifts for their children and teens. Okay. So it's on a point system. And, you know, we encourage them to come back and volunteer. Okay. Uh, and we've seen a good good success rate in that where families who come and receive yeah. these items, they come back That's and great. find a way to, yeah. to volunteer. So, uh, you know, we we work hard to to partner with churches and businesses and other organizations to gather the resources we need to mm-hmm. help at least 700 households. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, you know, um, it's an exciting time. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a season of giving. Um, I'm, I'm reminded being here with you today, I had an encounter before coming over here um, at our daily meal distribution to the homeless downtown. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a gentleman who came up on a bike, and uh, this neighbor is identified to be homeless, and he missed he missed it. Mm. I mean, we were we were fresh out of all the meals. We mm-hmm. we served about, about a hundred and hundred and forty six meals, mm. and uh, we were fresh out. Yeah. So um, one of our team members uh, said, "Hey, I think." We may have some something I can put together on the you know inside the building. So he yeah. he went in the building. And I don't know where he got whatever he got. He had like a sandwich. I'm like where 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 the sandwiches at, man? <laughs> he, he had a sandwich and um, crackers, a bottle of water, and I think uh, a container of applesauce and mm-hmm. a container of fruit. Mm. And uh, as he was coming out of the building, he was putting it all in the bag. And begins to hand it to this person, mm-hmm. and there's another gentleman who received the meal. Mm-hmm. It was in the midst of eating his meal. He 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 gets up, reaches in his bag, gets a bag of chips, 
mm. and hands it to this person. Mm-hmm. I mean, this this guy, another homeless individual yeah. who has nothing, doesn't know where his next meal is going to come from. Mm. He didn't even have a backpack. Mm-hmm. He just had himself. Yeah. You know, he had the same clothes on for the last several days. I've seen him yeah. quite often. I mean, he's right. he's homeless. He gives this other homeless man his last bag of chips. Mm-hmm. I, I'm seeing... It's the kingdom of God, man. The, yeah, I'm seeing yeah. the kingdom right before yeah. me. I mean, if people who have nothing can give, mm-hmm. we can definitely give when yeah. we have everything. Yeah, yeah. Two individuals who don't know where their next meal is going to come from, who don't have a place to lay their head, are giving to each other. Yeah. But we have cars, we have homes, <laughs> yeah. vacation property, mm-hmm. 401ks, mm-hmm. retirements. Yeah. I mean, we have so much. And when we hear stories like this, some of us are like, man, should I give to this or not? I, I counted all the cars that passed downtown uh-huh. today as we were passing out meals. And I said, what if every car that passed by would give a dollar? We would have had $300 hmm. in a period of two hours, yeah. two or three hours. Just like, yeah, if they can give to each other, why can't we give right. to each other? Yeah. And so, I mean, I think we all carry the responsibility to be a good Samaritan, mm-hmm. to, to to not pass by like the priest right. and Levite, yep. but to stop and say, hey, let me respond to this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what is our response? Yeah. 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 And with that, like as a, as a Samaritan, you're stewarding those opportunities. Yes. Um, that come across, you know, like you, you don't know uh, what's going to happen from that. And I think maybe that's some of what does scare some people off is like, I don't know where this would lead. I don't know what it's yeah. going to be. Um, or... That overwhelming sense of my dollar is not going to make a difference right. because the problem's so big. So you absolutely, know, come on, like yeah. the government will figure it out or whatever. <laughs> it's like, no, that's that's what we do. Right, that we show up, you know, as the church especially, and um, which is something we're doing. So you know, GFC, we're collecting green beans and corn, yay, all of October uh, to to help set you guys up, hopefully for su- success during this holiday season, and then. We're showing up, I think, to to pack, and we're showing up to distribute. Yes, right. Yes. Um, so we'll have those opportunities coming out to people. Um, so everybody listening, get a chance just to be, go see, you know. Uh, and I think that you know, like you said, that taste and see event, I love it. Um, mm. Just if you can see what's happening and who you're ministering to and alongside with, uh, right. it's just you know, it, there's something more to that than just like, okay, well, I gave some money, you know, at this thing or. Whatever. Yeah. Um, there, there's something beautiful to that. So, um, well, I mentioned before that one of our church members was running the front desk. So I know, like you said, you started out as a volunteer. What are some ways that people um, can jump in and join, you know, that mission and what you guys are doing at Good Sam? Yeah, we're, we uh, have our mission open every day from Monday through Friday. Okay. Eight in the morning to about four. Okay. So if there's, you know, there are those who are watching or listening who want to come and stop by to help us pack food boxes, uh, you know, prepare meals, uh, distribute meals to the homeless, um, deliver food boxes to families who don't have transportation. Okay. Um, you know, work with the front desk intake team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, return phone calls. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. I mean, we have multiple opportunities for those who may want to volunteer. Mm-hmm. To taste and see yeah. what it's like. Um, we have uh, special uh, times where they're after hour events to pack boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have those regu- regularly scheduled, yeah. but they're seasonal. And I think you guys are coming yeah. one evening. Yeah. And uh, matter of fact, when I got out of a team meeting, um, there, uh, our p- partnerships and programs uh, team, they were like, well, who's going to pack all these boxes? These boxes, I'm like, hey, Grace got it. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna knock it out. <laughs> we'll show up. Uh, they'll show. We'll just give them some donuts and coffee and 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 be good cheerleaders. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, there there will be multiple opportunities um, to pack boxes for Thanksgiving okay. and Christmas. There are opportunities during the day for our uh, regular food pantry. Mm-hmm. Um, 
there are opportunities uh, that's coming up to help us prepare for our Be A Light Marketplace, which is a store with Christmas gifts, uh, items yeah. that you know that are staged throughout um, our, the secluded location. We don't advertise the location okay. for, uh, just because yeah. you know confidentiality reasons, mm-hmm. but um, they can help um, work the store, uh, prepare the store. Mm-hmm. Um, the list goes on. Yeah. But we're really excited. We're really blessed because 80 to 85% of our labor is all volunteers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not possible to run this type of organization without volunteers. It's mm-hmm. a community mm-hmm. ministry. We're held accountable by the community. We're held accountable by the churches that work with us. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're just doing our... Like I told my wife, I'm on a, yeah. I've been on an 11-year mission trip. <laughs> you know, I hadn't... Yeah. I hadn't got off the plane yet, yeah. you know, um, but it, it's it's so rewarding, it's so fulfilling to know that you've made a difference, mm-hmm. um, especially when they come back and you know they they now have jobs, they have a home, they right. you know they're stable, you know they connect to a church. I mean that just warms my heart mm. to know, hey, I I remember when you were yeah. you were you were homeless or you mm-hmm. were left, yeah, and Beat up by life's challenges, but now you're volunteering with us. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just so rewarding. I have one of our team members. Uh, he will go home barefooted at times. Uh-huh. People, people say, "Well, where, where's your where's your shoes? You did it again." Yeah, he gives his shoes away. If he sees someone without shoes, he will literally take his shoes off and mm. give and give give his shoes away. I mean, um, mm. you know, you do what you have to do. You know, if you if you have it, then why not give? Yeah, it's a blessing to give more to give than to receive. That's biblical, right? I think that's in the Book of Acts. It's in the Bible. It's more blessed to give than to receive. But the reason why I believe, if you have so much, is so you can give so much. You know? Yeah. Like uh, if you are faithful over what you have now, mm-hmm. and you properly steward that. Mm. And you're led by God to, you know, properly yeah. distribute it yeah. according to his will for your life. Just think how much more he would give you. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. just think how much more God will entrust you with. Man. <laughs> so we did, um, I don't remember how long ago this was, but it was, you know, it's craziness going on in Ukraine. But uh, we did a, a thing one Sunday where we had people donate their jackets and shoes to go over, to be sent over to Ukraine. And I knew it was happening beforehand, and I actually wasn't going to be here that day. But my immediate thought was, well, I'm going to wear the, I would wear the worst. If I knew it was coming, I'd wear the worst shoes that I possibly had and, and then still feel good about leaving them, mm. you know? And I'm like, man, there is some darkness in my heart, mm. you know? Because, like, even you saying that, I'm like, got my little loafers on right now. And right. I'm like, well, I just, here you go, you know? Yeah. Um, but, man, that's it. Like, just to cultivate that heart. Right. Where my first thought is not what am I losing, or what am I giving up, right? But what is this person gaining? Uh, and that is a total. That's a, that's just a shift. Yes, you know, for us individually, culturally, even a lot of us in the church. I mean, it's you know, we've been trained, we've been inculcated with a certain mindset of accumulate, uh, and so it's hard. Yeah. It's hard, man. Um, so, you know, so you're saying you've got opportunities for us. To loosen our hands, yes. right? Open them yes. up and give and show love. Uh, um, uh, so where where can people go to find out more about, about Good Samaritan? You could visit uh, goodsamjc.org. Okay. Goodsamjc.org. Um, we're on Facebook, mm-hmm. Instagram. All right. You on TikTok? Um, you doing TikToks out there? Uh, <laughs> oh, we've dabbled with it. There's so many social media outlets out there. Yeah. It's hard to keep up with yeah. them all. But yeah. we're definitely on uh Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. We've dabbled in TikTok here and there. Yeah. But, um, you know, uh, going back to what you said about giving, mm-hmm. it just feels so good and it feels so mm-hmm. right. Um, I mean, when it becomes an addiction. Yeah, yeah. It's one to not be ashamed of. That's right. <laughs> well, and we, we unlearn generosity. You get, I mean, you get around kids. I mean, yeah, toddlers fight over stuff, but you get around a five, six, seven year old, 
they love giving. Yes. They love giving. And I'm like, man, we used to be like that, you know, but we learn over time to protect and defend. And, right. Um, so I love it. We're created you to know, give, right? We are. Oh, 100%. You know? And that's, I think that is part of the being childlike. Mm. You know, it's not just faith and trust. It's, no, there's generosity there. Yes. There's an openness to, I don't care what your color is or your gender or your background. Like, right. I, just, we're humans. So, yeah. man, beautiful. Love Amen. it. I love Amen. It. Love it. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. Really for appreciate it. Uh, I know everybody's going to enjoy getting to hear more about you <laughs> and about Good Samaritan and then jumping in. Um, yeah. So, people are going to be bringing food uh, and then get on site there and, and do some of the work. I look forward to. Serving alongside everybody, you know. Right. Hey, let's let's jump jump in the mission field and and get our hands dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that'll be that'll be great. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna close out, and I'm gonna give my awkward like, hey, if you like us, <laughs> give us a five star review because you can, you can yes. do that, and that'll five help stars. us. That'll help us move up, you yeah. know, the rankings and get people right to listen. Uh, so yeah, you can take thirty seconds to do that, but you can also send us a message or questions to podcast at gfcnow.com, and we would love to take those. Um, and be involved in our future conversations, whatever it may be. And if you want to know more about Grace Fellowship, just go online, gfcnow.com. It's an easy way to do that. And like you heard Aaron say, you can go to goodsamjc.org uh, yes. and you can find out more about that ministry. Hope you guys have a blessed day. Yes, God bless.